Tonight, preparing for disaster. The lower EP council's push to make sure everything is ready to go in case of an emergency. And an upset in the ring amid some good results for the 10th anniversary Shins of Steel. This is Southern Cross News with Tim Hatfield. Good evening, but first tonight the loss of over 450 megawatts of wind power due to a software malfunction has been cited as the major cause of September's statewide blackout. The energy market operator has released its final report into the incident today, calling for better collaboration between stakeholders to prevent another incident. John Hunt has more details for us. The September 2016 blackout caused major chaos across South Australia as the grid took a battering due to severe weather. The Australian energy market operator has released its final report into what went wrong and says a sudden loss of power triggered a collapse in supply and this was due to a software issue. On the afternoon of Wednesday the 28th of September, two tornadoes with speeds of over 200 kilometres an hour damaged two transmission lines in the mid-north. There were then six voltage dips over two minutes at around a quarter past four. As a result, nine wind farms in the mid-north ceased generation as a software protection feature kicked in, causing 456 megawatts of power to dip out in seven seconds. The Haywood interconnector was overwhelmed and tripped out 700 milliseconds later, causing the state to go black. In the report, the AEMO says it was unaware of the wind farm's protection features, and had the protection been changed, the wind farms would have continued, and SA could have avoided a blackout. The loss of power caused major disruptions in our region, including damage to the wireless steelworks' blast furnace, which cooled due to a lack of heat generation. A lack of voltage stability also delayed the return of power to Wyler and Port Augusta, as the isolated Mount Miller wind farm on the EP needed it before it could supply. 19 recommendations have been made, which focus on better communications between AEMO, the Bureau of Meteorology and SA grid operators. Meanwhile, Port Lincoln residents have been told their lengthy blackout was caused by weather events, causing failure to two of the three units at the NG site. All three had been successfully tested prior to the severe weather weather event and were ready to go. Unit 1 and 2 then tripped just before 1am on Thursday the 29th of September, forcing Unit 3 to be taken offline due to frequency control issues. So with the report finalised, the ideological debate over renewable energy should heat up. But the state's energy minister says the report showing that renewable energy was not to blame should put that argument to rest. But Tim, no doubt it won't. John Hunt reporting there. The Lower Eyre Peninsula Council is developing a recovery plan should the region be faced with a catastrophic disaster. The strategy to safeguard against major emergencies, including fire, floods and major power outage, has the potential to be adopted by government services across the EP. It's the doomsday scenario we hope never happens, but the Lower EP Council is developing a plan just in case it does. We decided that it would be a good idea to have a disaster recovery plan and between us and the State Recovery Office we've been able to access a grant from the Local Government Research and Development Fund. The Council is developing a strategy to identify any gaps that might not have been considered in past natural disasters. A disaster recovery plan is something that would be useful, um, certainly knowing that Disasters happen in South Australia, particularly bushfires, and we've experienced our fair share in our region. The aim is to also provide a template for other councils to use during an emergency and to keep the communications open so even in the event of a blackout, nobody is left in the dark. It's just to have a plan to go forward in, uh, and to better understand and document who the contacts are, who does what, and so that, that people would know, you know how to go about it. The Lower Air Peninsula Council has organised a number of community forums to simulate disasters and talk about the region's emergency management plan. They're urging residents to attend the upcoming forums in Coffin Bay and Port Lincoln to discuss the worst case scenario. It's about forward thinking, so you know, just, just to make sure that everyone has, a, has an understanding and, and be educated a bit more as well as plan for what might happen. For more information about how to attend the upcoming forums, head to our Facebook page. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. The idea of a heavy vehicle bypass in Broken Hill has been resurrected. The proposal first gained traction in 2010 and is seen as a way to end road trains passing through the city. 
300 trucks a day pass through Broken Hill and it's a great strain on the city's roads. A heavy vehicle bypass plan could see those numbers drop exponentially. It would be one of the best things for Broken Hill to take trucks away from the main city um, and take them outside of the area. The idea is to build new roads around the city, connecting the Silver City and Barrier Highways on both sides. This would allow trucks heading east, south and west to circumvent the city and no longer travel on Crystal, Williams and Idide Street. The idea has recently attracted attention as Perillia planned to reopen the North Mine. If we could get those trucks off, off the main streets, that would be fantastic. Perillia was to contribute to the plan and also cancel, but low metal prices and the global financial crisis in 2010 saw the proposal shelved. Mayor Turley says state government assistance would be needed to make the ring roads a reality. That sort of funding requires the state government putting infrastructure funding into, the, into that community and we haven't been able to escalate that up at this stage. While the bypass plan may not be on the agenda at the moment, it could very well be fast-tracked in the coming months. Council's been asked to put together a priority list of infrastructure projects and the bypass could be on the docket. For Council, we've already got a lot of projects that we'd like to see extended and uh, we've already got applications in for some of them. But, you know, we could consider what is the best priority. It's about infrastructure and maybe, you know, that we could look at roads as well. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. An unlicensed man was caught drink driving in Port Perry this morning. The 21-year-old was stopped by police at around 2 o'clock, where he returned a blood alcohol reading nearly twice the legal limit. The man's car was defected and impounded for 28 days. He'll appear in court at a later date. And a while, a man will also appear in court after being nabbed for drink driving over the weekend. Just after 1.15 on Saturday, police stopped a car on Lacey Street in Wyala Playford for a breath test on the driver. He returned a reading of 0 0.101, twice the limit. The 26-year-old was reported for drink driving and has had his car impounded for 28 days and lost his licence for six months as well. Well, stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news, what next for Port Augusta's Kinder Gym program as Council holds off on its demolition plan? The details ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. The Port Augusta Council has come up with a couple of alternative venues for its kinder gym after deciding to delay the demolition of the Be Active Centre. But the future of the gymnastics classes held there is less certain, with Council encouraging parents to run that service independently. This morning, Kelly Hobbs and her little girl Rita were just two of many enjoying Kinder Gym. It's great for her growth development and um, her social skills. She really enjoys coming here. The ageing Be Active Centre was going to be demolished in a matter of months, leaving the playtime with nowhere to go. But Port Augusta Council has committed to keeping it open for now. The option of setting a date for demolition wasn't accepted due to the fact we want to make sure that everybody who uses the facility has somewhere to go. And Council has ramped up its investigation into alternative venues. Carlton Primary School and the Early Years Parenting Centre on Stirling Road are two being considered. That would be fine as long as Kinder Gym continues. The future of the gymnastics classes also held at the Be Active Centre is murky. With little attendance, they're currently running at a loss. But parents want the service to continue in one way or another. They're considering establishing their own gymnastics club. We're trying to step away from trying to run these type of activities um, and get the community to build uh, new groups. The Be Active Centre is also hired by the public for birthday parties. Council says they'd be happy for that business to be absorbed by Beck's Jumpin' Party on Conroy Street. You've got a facility now that's positioned in Port Augusta that does that, um, so try to use those professional outcomes. Lauren Rose, Southern Cross News. China's largest private steel company has shown its support for a major mining project close to Broken Hill. Shagang Steel recently signed a letter of intent for purchasing 2 million tonnes a year from Magnetite Mines' Mawson Iron Project west of the Silver City. The demand for Magnetite Mines' high-quality product has been reinforced, with Shah Steel showing its interest. This LOI is it's a very significant LOI, um, signed with a very significant steel mill. It's... China's largest private steel mill. Shah Steel is number seven in the world steel rankings and plans to purchase two million tonnes annually once the Mawson Iron project gets underway. While the letter is non-binding, Magnetite Mines say the deal is a prologue to a binding contract which would form part of a security package to finance the mine's construction. It gives us 
uh, the opportunity to work closely with them uh, in the way that they will use our product uh, in their steel mills. And it opens uh, the market for us uh, greatly in China for our product. Detailed feasibility studies are currently underway into many aspects of the project. It adds to a number of international steel mills signing agreements. It brings to a total now of uh, 8 million tonnes off take uh, letter of intents that we have uh, with the market, which helps us move to, uh, to the next stage with our, uh, with our financial uh, raisings and uh, the way that we will start to finance the project. Last year, the company's chairman said he would need about $4 billion to get the project into production. Discussions continue with steelmakers in Asia, the Middle East and North Africa. Patrick Roenke, Sunday Cross News. The sealing of Karuna Road in Port Augusta is well underway with the strip from Addison Road to Shack Road next in line to be bitumized. The section will be closed to traffic until next Wednesday and residents are being warned it will affect access to their houses. Stage one of the Karuna Road upgrade was finished last year. And we're completing stages two and three, which is Addison Road to Shack Road and Shack Road to Airport Road. For the next week, Addison Road to Shack Road will be closed to traffic to accommodate the heavy machinery. There will be some impacts to uh, residents. The, the, the people that live along the section that will be closed will be able to get in and out uh, via contact with the uh, contractor and they've been sent letters uh, with those arrangements. Shack owners will also be affected. Everyone else will just have to uh, take detours that we have around the site and hopefully uh, it won't be much of an inconvenience. The total cost of the ceiling is $1.3 million, a mix of state and federal funding. It will have uh, a lot of positive impacts to the city um, and obviously uh, it will assist with uh, transport routes uh, local communities, the uh, local shack owners uh, group and also defence and also to the ambulances that use the uh, RFTS and airport. The entire upgrade is expected to be finished within the coming months. Lauren Rose, Southern Cross News. The Air Peninsula Foundation is distributing back-to-school vouchers for students and families in need to purchase essential items for school. The Community Foundation will be giving out nearly $50,000 to over 30 schools across the EP to support local children. It's a wonderful gift to students who might be going without. This year we have nearly $50,000 to distribute across Air Peninsula and our students will be receiving a voucher of $50 per family or uh, per student. The Air Peninsula Community Foundation is providing students with donations to buy the accessories they need most. We ask at this time of the year for schools to identify their students in most need or families in most need and we work with over 30 schools on Air Peninsula. The $50 vouchers given to students allow them or their families to purchase items they might otherwise have missed out on. Families can purchase any school need so it might be books or clothing, uniforms, pencils or other things that they need to get back to school. The Foundation all too happy to help support the region's youth. We've given out more than $150,000 to um, schools on Air Peninsula. The aim is to provide every child with the same platform to reach their highest potential. They're also encouraging schools to match the donations provided. Vouchers that we give out to schools have a little space for people to give feedback and we love to read that feedback from families when they receive a voucher. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us when we return after the break. An upset in the ring amid some good results for the 10th anniversary Shins of Steel. The details next. <laughs> Welcome back. A winner has been announced for the Broken Hill Solar Plant Viewing Platform competition. The job of picking a winner was pretty hard for judges, but this design, submitted by Queenslander Timothy Bauer, will be the one to get constructed. AGL also pleased with the submissions and is now meeting with architects and engineers to bring the designs to life. Well, the 10th edition of Whaler's Shins of Steel has been hailed a success with a capacity crowd seeing a number of thrilling fights on Saturday. It was a mixed night for Whaler's Warlock's Gym with a good win and an upset in the main bout. A packed crowd was treated to a night of big hits as Shins of Steel celebrated 10 years. Fighters from across Australia battled it out in 13 fights, many of them going down to the wire. 
Promoter Justin Fennell says he was happy with the matchups. I, I match all the guys fairly and all the out-of-town gyms were very grateful for the fact that I just didn't make it a, a, an easy fight show for my guys. A number of Wilder fighters made their ring debut and while they didn't win, they were far from disgraced. Local boy Gus Sarrett provided the home crowd with some excitement as he overcame Wollonga Sean Laba in a thrilling fight. I've never in all the years heard the crowd go off the way they did in that last round when Gus uh, put, the, put the count on the young fella from, uh, from Adelaide. However, in the main bout, Wilder's Hayden Lyon was defeated in a major upset by Brett McCluskey. McCluskey landed two punches to the jaw, which rattled Lyon, forcing the referee to call it off. That's part and parcel of the fight game. He got caught early with a big shot, um, couldn't recover, and, and, and that's, that's part and parcel of our sport. Our sport is, you know, people, people sometimes get knocked. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. Well, a ripper round of competition in a number of sports over the weekend. Several teams advancing through to grand finals and some winter sports already kicking off. Keziah Sullivan joins us now with the results. And Kez, a busy weekend there in Port Pirie. Tim, it definitely was. The softball competition heated up over the weekend with the grand finals being played on Saturday. In the A grade, it was an experienced Solly Cats side who went up against Cougars. The girls battled it out for over two hours, playing seven innings. Solly Cats' ability to get around the bases is what ultimately gave them the premiership. They defeated Cougars by seven runs. Taking a look at the basketball and in Port Pirie, the Pacers secured their grand final spot with a win over the Ducks. And the Globetrotters had a 10-point victory over Tomcats. They will now face the Ducks tomorrow night for the remaining grand final spot. In the women's, Pacers beat the top side to advance through to the grand final. And the Globetrotters had a comfortable win over Patriots. Globetrotters will now play the reigning Premier's Tomcats tomorrow night. Wyala held their basketball grand final over the weekend. It would have been a happy camp at Rapina. Both their men and women went home with the trophy. Heading over to Broken Hill Tennis, Smashes defeated drop shots. Top spins went home with the points over volleys and backhands had a comfortable win against Swallows. Back to SA and Wyala soccer teams are still finding their feet after the season launch. This week Croatia and Westlands went home with the wins. Back to Port Piri and in baseball, Tigers defeated Panthers to secure their grand final spot this weekend. They will face off with Cats. So Tim, again, a lot of sport happening around the regions. Basketball, baseball and cricket will wrap up this weekend and footy and netball is not far away. All right, good stuff. Thank you, Kez. Well, stay with us after the break. A look at the local weather. Welcome back. Turning to the weather now, a fine and sunny day again today. 27 the top in Port Augusta with 25 in Wyala. Port Lincoln today 24. Port Perry also on 27, 28 over in Broken Hill. On the national satellite image, patchy cloud over the region is set to see some showers in two tomorrow. Nothing cyclonic, however. Out on the Gulf waters, the winds to 15 knots and mainly westerly. Seas below a metre and southerly. Sunrise just before half past seven. So we have some showers on the way tomorrow. Temps still mild, however. 28 in Port Augusta and 26 in Wyala, Port Lincoln 24, Port Perry 27, Broken Hill fine though on 32 degrees. And then looking ahead, the showers are short-lived, 20 for Thursday and Friday in Port Lincoln, 18 both days in Cleve, 22 for Woodner. Wyala 20 both days also with showers clearing but they may be back by the weekend, Port Augusta 21 to run out this week, Kadena on 22. Port Perry looking at showers and 21, then a fine 23 to finish off the week. 19 and fine both days in Clare. Broken Hill sunny and 21 for Thursday and for Friday. And that is the local news for this Tuesday evening. Don't forget you can stay up to date with us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also get in touch via email. We'll see you back here tomorrow night from 6.30. I'm Tim Hatfield from the Southern Cross News team. Have a good evening. Good night.